Okay, right. So I'm Stephen Christ. Um, the other person here I wanted to mention is Stuart. He's the lead developer for the SumPy project. Um, and of course, we have a SumPy board. I'll talk about that a little bit in a little bit. And uh, the development team. Um, so I'm at, I'm at Goddard, uh, and I have my Twitter and GitHub there. Um, so I'm going to start not with, this isn't bashing. This is just explaining where this is coming from. Um, so, so on the solar side, um, we actually have a very uh, um, large and extensive kind of mature library of uh, software that's built on top of IDL. Um, it's called, it's generally referred to as SolarSoft. And it's sort of, it's a modular, it's a package system. Um, I think I will take my phone. I'm getting a lot of mentions. <laughs> it's very distracting to have my pocket uh, vibrating all the time. Um, uh, so it's, it's kind of a packages system. It provides kind of the core tools, but then it also has a number of packages for different instruments. Um, so that's the main way that on the solar side we do um, solar data analysis. Um, and like I mentioned here, it's about 89% IDL code. There's a little bit of Perl, and uh, it's gigantic. Um, just the, the core package is about 290,000 lines. Uh, but if you look at, is there a picture? Maybe, no, what is it? <laughs> yeah, no. yeah, that's right. <laughs> no, I don't think so. Um, uh, but then, so the individual instruments will provide their own packages, and those will have lots of lines as well. So like, if you look at the Soho package, um, that has 100K lines in it. So it's kind of the same size as the core package. And it's hosted and distributed by Lockheed Martin. Um, they've just kind of got into this um, uh, because they, they actually build a lot of uh, solar missions. Um, so I wouldn't say, you know what, if we already have this, uh, it's happening now, you know, it's available now. What, what are we really trying to solve with SunPy? <coughs> um, well, the first thing is, of course, you know, IDL is, is uh, not free or open source. So that limits access to solar data analysis. Uh, that's something we wanted to solve. Um, the development system is not really open. There's no easy or clear way for people to contribute, uh, which is, a, I think, a, a big problem. It's also not version controlled. Um, so things change sort of in the background. Whenever you update, it's uh, very hard to reproduce past results because there's no version control uh, and there's no history. Um, that could be solved if all this went into version control, um, <clears throat> but it's, uh, there's also an issue of sort of history and uh, of, of um, reluctance on the part of that team to do that, unfortunately. Uh, but the other thing is that it's actually kind of a mess. Um, the development is not coordinated or organized. Um, there are huge amounts of duplicate files inside the system. So um, if you just look through, you can find about 1,000, 2,000 file conflicts in the package. Um, so not only that, so there are multiple places where the same file exists because nothing's coordinated. So people literally will copy things out of gen and put it into their own package. And then the worst thing is they will go in and change the functionality in that uh, function. Um, so you can see there the number of places where the code differs is about 713 places. Um, so it, it's it's difficult to manage. Uh, it's kind of a, a, a kind of a mess and hard to solve essentially. And there are no standard ways of doing anything. So um, that means that whenever you're trying to do you know something that should be kind of easy and simple, uh, there is no one place to go do it. Everybody has to kind of figure it out on their own. And there's no testing. That's why things can break. Um, of course, IDL is not used by other people uh, in other fields, so you can't leverage work uh, that's being done by other communities. Students don't really have any background in it, um, which means you have to teach them when they come onto your project, right? Um, and then there's really no standardization of documentation, and therefore nothing is really discoverable. Um, so people also often waste time, I know I've done it, uh, rewriting things that already exist, and you find out usually a week later that somebody's already done that. Um, so what is SunPy? So the point of SunPy is to kind of provide this fundamental software uh, and a free and viable platform for solar data analysis. Um, of course, you know, this is kind of built on the fact that scientific part-time stack is very 
powerful and maturing. Um, and this is a new start, which means we're trying to reorganize and rethink how we develop uh, and share the software. Um, <clears throat> of course, open source, version control, uh, which are great. So now everyone can contribute. So where are we now? Uh, so we started, actually, amazingly, uh, almost exactly five years ago. So at the, unfortunately, it's right at the end of this conference. Uh, March 28, 2011. Um, we have 25,000 lines from 83 contributors. Uh, we currently have 209 issues open with 43 outstanding pull requests. Maybe that's not, that's not great. Uh, we're working on that. And we just released um, 0.6.2. I would say, unlike AstroPy, we are definitely not mature. Um, we are still working on some basic structure issues. Um, so the API is in flux, and we do plan on breaking things. So Stuart is very much against breaking things. No, no, no. I'm very uh, much for breaking. <laughs> I break all the things all the time. <laughs> um, but, but that's why we're not at one. Um, so we do have a governance structure as well. Uh, we thought this was very important because uh, we were trying to solve this problem of, of, uh, of for SolarSoft, you know, how, how does this, how does work happen on this system? Um, so we actually, we have a board essentially, and the board, uh, the main purpose of the board is to elect a lead developer. That lead developer essentially mm -hmm. leads the development. Um, but the main way that the board um, uh, sort of leads the uh, development or leads the, the, the arc of development is that um, the board is the only one that can vote and approve some Pi enhancement proposals similar to uh, Python enhancement proposals that basically say, you know, this is, this is how something should work or this is a standard. For example, we recently approved uh, a requirement that we use units everywhere. So we have AstroPy units and anything, any new code needs to use units. Um, and we have a founding document and there's a board membership we try to, anyone can be on the board. The board can, um, you can essentially uh, just get voted onto it. We try to be as inclusive as possible and we're actually looking for, us, looking for someone um, to replace Tom, unfortunately, right? Uh, so if you're interested in participating, um, We'd be happy to have you. Um, so here's kind of the mile high overview. Um, so unlike AstroPy, which has some <laughs> funding, we haven't been able to access some funding. So we're kind of working on kind of high level things um, where we depend more on the lower level <laughs> stuff from AstroPy or other projects. Um, so we're focusing on calibrated data. So handling sort of prepping of data that's really, um, SolarSoft kind of provides a lot of that stuff and it's just a lot of work and very complicated. So we're not uh, trying to do that. We're focusing on high level objects where basically we wrap a lot of low level objects and provide sort of standardized uh, data types for pretty much m many instruments um, uh, across solar, solar, solar observations. And some of the low hanging fruit we've been trying to address is retrieving data and reading the data and um, reading data is actually surprisingly mm -hmm. difficult because there's very little standardization in solar data, unfortunately. Um, here are all the missions uh, that we're currently supporting that we can read the data in and provide the appropriate uh, data structure. And here is kind of an overview of, of how we do that. Um, so we have kind of a, a so on the left-hand side, you kind of have all these different files. Usually they live on the internet, but they don't have to live there. We actually have a database structure um, so that you can kind of register files that you've downloaded into the database. And so if, it, if you try to search for something, it'll actually look whether you have it already, and we'll return that for you. Uh, but then there are a bunch of different uh, systems that um, can search for data for you, and we're providing kind of a single interface called FIDO. Um, that will that interact with those things in a standard way. And then that kind of gets read in. So you download the file and then you read it in. And essentially it goes into these, uh, we have these three main um, data structures, map, light curve, and spectrum. We're looking at, these are kind of the simplest map I'll talk about a little bit more because a lot of our data is basically images. Uh, and the, 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 structures are, the structure is kind of shown down there uh, where you have kind of metadata, you have the data itself, uh, and then you kind of have axes. Um, 
So this doesn't, this doesn't include sort of more complicated structures like um, where you, have, you might have mixtures of, of different of these things and we're trying to work on how to solve that particular problem. But I'll, I'll show you where we are on the, so generic map is our um, uh, sort of our, our best, most mature data structure, uh, most often used, um, and it provides kind of standard is interface, coordinate aware image um, across pretty much all the instruments that I was showing you before. Um, so basically the user doesn't have to worry about where this data is coming from. It's just an image. Uh, mm -hmm. You know where, where you're looking at and it provides you, um, uh, you know, standard interface to how to, to look at the data and also how to interact with uh, the, the metadata as well. Um, these data structures, I think it's important that we provide standard ways to look at them. So we, have, we always have a plot function associated with them so that you can actually look at them. You know, you, generally, you, you read them there and you just want to look at it and see what you have. Um, so that's always included. And then we try to provide functions that are uh, related to that particular um, uh, structure. So for a generic map, you may, you may need to, you may want to kind of resample it or rotate it or take a small uh, a region out of it um, and maybe you know, convert from coordinates uh, to uh, from sky coordinates to pixel coordinates, and then we can also subclass. So this is this is a the kind of the structure that we have set up right now, um, which which may change, and we're actually that middle interface we're kind of missing right now. Um, but the idea is basically you have to take a generic map, and um, you would <clears throat> you would subclass based on a measurement. So those measurements usually you need some sort of standard functions to address those measurements, essentially. So that would come along, and then, and then that feeds into uh, an instrument subclass as well. So right, HMI and MDI, if you guys aren't familiar, they're both magnetograms, uh, looking at the, the magnetic field and the sun. Um, and generally, with magnetograms, you want to do standard things. Um, right now, the instrument classes um, kind of provide these kind of placeholders for tasks like data prepping, but as I mentioned, we're not really doing that right now, but we do have a little bit of it. Um, they also provide kind of data scaling and color maps for plotting, so that basically you're always looking at the data in the best way possible. Um, they also provide kind of a nice place to put documentation. If you click that link, it'll show you. So we kind of, in our, you can actually look at the data structure and say, oh, you know, here's some background on the mission, on the instrument that you're looking at. Um, and also usually points to the mission pages and documentation from those missions. Um, and then we have, I'm almost done. Uh, we have some things on the back end, uh, which is why we're holding these as well. Um, MapCube and Composite Map, I won't spend too much time, but basically it's a subclass where you can have an ordered list of the same uh, subclass of maps. So basically you have a number of observations, a bunch of time, that gives you a bunch of things like animation and alignment capabilities. And Composite Map, map is the idea of you have many different observations at the same time and you want to look at them at the same uh, uh, at the same time so you can overlay them and such. Um, then we have a few, a number of other things, solar constants, we have a GUI that we're kind of working on, uh, database I already mentioned, um, we have this uh, interface of the HEK which is kind of the solar <coughs> information, solar event information search and coordinate transformations, just to name a few. Um, and this is my last slide, so um, I, mentioned, I showed basically where we are on, on map. Um, we're trying to extend that to the other ones, spectrogram, which is kind of the least, most beta of all of those. Uh, Light curve could also use some work. Um, we are gonna get a little bit of support coming on um, from DKIST, which is a big uh, uh, project on the NIST side. Um, we have Google Summer Code coming. We're very excited about that. I thought I would use my bully pulpit up here to uh, kind of make some pitches for conference ideas. These are unfortunately things that I would want other people to lead, <laughs> which is why I'm mentioning these here. Uh, I think it would be really helpful to have an ND data structure discussion, the WCS update discussion, uh, and I think I have a number of people already interested in discussing AstroPy models, and I would be particularly interested in having emission mechanisms, kind of standard emission me mechanisms that are provided. Um, I think Black Body is already sitting in there somewhere, but needs to be brought in. 
I <coughs> am particularly interested in periphery branch development, but anyway. Um, and then uh, some ideas for sprints or projects. Um, it would be nice to have kind of a meta object um, discussion so that you can sort of have this standard way to looking at sort of information about your data. Um, and then a, a sprint, a spec, spectrum sprint, essentially, like how would we think about building a spectrum object? Um, so that would be very interesting. Anyway, that's it. Thank you. Indexing numpy arrays as usual, or do you have any? You're, you're talking about you're talking about the submap thing that I was mentioning here, for yeah. example. Yeah. So right now, um, so this the map basically comes with this function submap, which returns a map. So you you call it, and um, you can basically say it. You can either give it uh, a cutout in uh, coordinate space or in pixel space, and it will square cutout. So yeah. Right now it's square. Uh, we wanted mm -hmm. to go to a more general, we have a region of interest object, which has never really gone anywhere, but the idea is that you would be able to provide a region of interest, which could be sort of any shape. And then and then you could also pass that to submap, and it would kind of give you something out. All right, so like that's that. like another useful uh, topic to discuss later. Special cube also has subset selection thing going on. Mm -hmm. It's high region for some things, but also has a square cutout. There might be some, uh, some people can code there. Sure, sure. Yeah, that would be great. Yeah, regions okay. is still an open issue, I think. Yeah. Yeah. So that's generic. Uh, more questions? So, so are the actual um, data analysis methods coupled to the data analysis? So, so I mean, the, if you go um, one slide further. This one? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So are the actual data analysis methods coupled to the subclass? Oh, the, on the instrument side? I mean, like, Um, right now, that's not, no, that's, it's not. Um, it, it's, so the instrument class, instrument classes and the measurement classes, um, so measurement class, that would be sort of a, a clear place to put that. Um, we were also thinking in instrument classes, you can hold uh, sort of instrument specific calibration information, which you would need to carry if you wanted to do kind of fits and things like that. Um, uh, so it, it this is a this is kind of a structural issue that we're still, like I said, you know, we're in beta. We're still trying to understand how we want to do this. Yeah, does that answer your question? I, I feel like I yes. kind of went around it. Okay. Yes. I, I have a question. <laughs> so that you haven't gotten any interest from the institutions or funding sources yet, even uh, a little bit. <laughs> a little, yeah, it's a little sad. If that, if yeah. That's so happening. so there is. So well, I, that there will be some arrangement with the deepest people right. that involve some dev time, hopefully, maybe involving me. Um, <laughs> but it, that still won't be direct some by funding, right? It will still be to write the pipeline for deepest. It just happens to be in Python and they'll yeah. be friendly. It's not the same thing. Yeah. So, so on the solar it it's helps. close. It's it, yeah, it, it helps. You could step forward. Right. But. right. Yeah. So, so on the solar side, I feel like we're not as good about funding software. Okay. Um, and that's basically the, one of the main problems. Well, <laughs> well, you guys actually have, there, there are some full-time software development people, right? Yeah. So, so this right. Which we don't. We don't, really. Not, it, it's, it's, not, it's not official astrophysics funding as yeah. such. Yeah, yeah, it's SDSI. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's, yeah. that's right. That's right. Yeah, so, so we, the way we <laughs> carry funding on the solar side is basically just a mission. And the missions can decide to do whatever they want. Um, and... Um, uh, there's no there's no requirement really from coming on high that that you should kind of be working well together with people, and that's how this whole soil soft mess sort of <laughs> keeps propagating. It's basically missions will just do whatever they want in their packages. Okay, we have time for one more question. Well, I, I'd imagine that planetary scientists and people studying Venus or Saturn have similar problems. Yes. Are you able to comment on what they're doing or if they might benefit from some point? Uh, no, I can't comment. <laughs> Unfortunately, I don't know. I don't know enough. Um, that's something that I've been wanting to uh, 
pursue more, but haven't had the chance. Yeah. Um, would you talk like PDF I I have not personally. Yeah. 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 yeah I agree. All right. Let's thank our speaker.